consumer one. Uh, but they're they're really built and engineered for bad weather, for the out in rain, and and the, the dual downward facing props protect the motors from like dust getting in there and prolong the engine, prolong the motors. So, anyways, just an interesting one, but they're they're pretty close. Um, but as you go, as you progress, and you start doing research and start getting the feel, these are things that you want to look for as far as like what drone can maybe best fit what I'm doing, right? What drone can work with what I'm, the research I'm trying to do or the, the job or, or the field that I'm trying to get into and try to work with that. Because they, again, they're just like different tools, right? I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever been to like Home Depot or Lowe's. <laughs> uh, and you go to the hardware section and there's like a wall of hammers. Hammers really only do one thing, right? I, I mean, they put a hammer or something in. But there's smaller ones, bigger ones, there's dual headed ones, there's ones with the claw hook. You know, they all do the same thing, but they're all for different jobs, all for different purposes. Same like, like with drones, right? So, like I said, as you, as you go and as you start really getting into it and use, you know, getting into a career where you're utilizing drones um, or a field, not even necessarily a career, maybe just in a field that you want to apply drones to it, look for what, look for the best hammer, right? Look for the one that fits whatever you're trying to do. So, um, so yeah, so let me pop up. We'll try to, I'll try to throw them out there to you, let you guys see. I'll, I'll, I'll find that North C one because he's seen it. Well, first off, he gives the whole engineering description of how they came up with the props and the encasement, how they 3D print it. And it's, it's interesting, but it's also in a, sort of presentation, right? <laughs> so, um, but if you, if you, you know, go through that, then he'll, he'll show you the test and the results and stuff. And it's actually kind of, it, it's cool. And you can see like, oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. So that's a different way to drone. You know, the other thing too, they were one of the first ones to do that. The new Matrice, well, not really new, but the new TGI Matrice 300 has downward props for, the, for that same reason. It's not a case, but they have downward props. So anyway, um, so, um, I still get the mouse like it, like it All right. So yeah. Oh, the other thing too. That's what I was gonna say. You saw the email. Both of you guys saw the email and the video clip, and hopefully you guys saw my follow-up email. Just because the idea, you know, the video clip about the the newscast, the news story about how they're using drones for for property insurance and stuff like that, and assessing capturing the data. Really interesting. But I was I was watching it. I'm like, wow. The irony is that this is all captured by drones. Yeah. So, so it's drones covering drones. So it's drones and journalism talking about drones and insurance using data research from drones. So they're all over the place. So, um, so that, like I said, this is a good time to get into it. Okay. So today we're getting into chapter three of the book, but I have a, I have a PowerPoint. So chapter one, kind of overview, right? Explanation of the the 107 and who manufactures drones and what you need to do in the big, oh, let me ask you this. Let's do a little review. You're flying, right? And somebody comes up to you and goes, hey, how high can that drone go? <laughs> how high can it go? I'm sorry? How high can it go? Legally 400 feet. 400 feet. That's your answer. Right? That's it. Yeah, legally 400 feet. Right? I mean, yeah, physically it can go high. But for you to calculate, well, with this drone can actually, you know, with radio frequency, just say 400 feet. Right? So without interference, it could go actually a kilometer, you know, 400 feet. Because again, that's all they can, that's all you can do. That's all the FAA wants you to say. That's all the FAA wants you to know. There's, for us, there's nothing beyond 400 feet unless we go over an object, right? Just in the FAA mind, right? It's one of those things where, I think I mentioned this example last time, but just to be honest, well, here's the thing. So, J instructor, 400 feet. J drone pilot, I'm gonna tell you some of the things, right? So the reality is, 
it's like a stop sign at in a quiet neighborhood at 2.30 in the morning. Do you come to a complete stop, look both ways, and then proceed across the street? Or do you kind of roll and look and keep going, right? Cop or DMV ask you, do you stop at that? Yes, yes, I, all the time. I will stop and look, I'll have lunch, I'll, you know, whatever it is, right? <laughs> and then I'll proceed when it's safe. But when you're driving at 2.30 in the morning in a quiet neighborhood and nobody else is around, you kind of roll through. Okay? It's illegal, but you do it. Okay? So as I'm telling you, with the 400 foot, we are supposed to be at 400 feet. If you cross over, now here's the thing, but if, if you cross over, you are making that conscious decision. I am violating the law. Just like I am running this stop sign, right? So, again, FAA asks you, anybody asks you, 400 feet. But if you're doing something, you know, and you're trying to get an angle or you're trying to do something and you push up like you're 450 or something just to get a scope or, you know, capturing some data that you need to get, you need a wide thing, don't hang out up there. But, but you know come back down, but, you know, you know, like I said, teacher versus pilot, you know, <laughs> so I probably should, I, no, know, no, 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 that's right. no, 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 that's right, that's right, and I, I'd say that for most of the things you guys be doing, you don't need to go higher, oh, yeah, that. no, so, you know, if there's a research reason, you can get, you know, special permission and, yeah. and other steps, but, but for most of the types of things you guys be using with the regular standard visual camera, it's, you don't want to go a whole lot higher than that. Yeah, and besides, most of the stuff that you'll be doing anyways, just in general with drones, you're going to be usually around the 200 foot line, right? Just because, to, you know, ish, right? Just to capture usable data for whatever it is, whether it's a video, photos, those kind of things. Because otherwise, like I said, you get up to 400, it's cool, but there's not a lot of detail. Like, there's really no reason to really be up there, other than you say you were up there. But, like I said, I'm just letting you know. It's one of those things where, you know, you're not going to be, uh, they're not going to swim and arrest you if you, oh my gosh, I'm at 410, you know, don't hang out there, get back down. Yeah, and like, and like Professor Seidel said, the, the, you know, the tool for the, for the application, and so if you really did need to be higher, typically you're probably going to want to put the sensor on like an airplane or a helicopter or, you know, right. or some other platform because you have some need to go for miles and miles or something like that. Right, right. And, and again, you can, you can alert the FAA and let them know, like, request. You can't really, they don't really give over 400 waivers, but, um, but you could, you know, and ask them if you needed to. But again, do you need to? You'll see, when, if you guys haven't flown drones, you'll see we'll be at like 200, 300 feet out there. And you're like, okay, that's fine enough, right? So, but going back to my initial, um, response is, is if anybody asks how high can you go it's 400 feet right and shoot for that right really get that in your brain the only the only way the FAA and this will be on what this could be on your 107 exams is if to cross into above 400 feet is to avoid an accident or some kind of emergency purpose and they want you to immediately come back down so I don't want to be in that kind of situation because that means like a plane is down at 400 feet and you just have to go over it or something. So that's just a weird anomaly. But um, but that's, that is a question I've seen in the test bank for 107s that how you can, the only time you can really cross above 400 feet legally is accident. Like, and to then regain control or regain regain whatever it is and then come back down safely right they just don't want you hanging out there. Right? all right so second review question you know dude hey that's cool that's cool drone you know how much is it they always ask that how much is it uh, but also how far can it go line of sight there you go right it's got to keep it in line of sight again just those are two one two things that you should just kind of just implant in your brain and that's what it is, right? 400 feet high, line of sight, okay? So, can it go higher? Yes. Legally, no. Can you go farther? Yes. Legally, no, right? So, 
as you guys are prepping for the 107, don't confuse yourself. 400 feet, minus seven. That's it, right? Does that make sense, right? Just get in that practice and you guys will get it. So, okay, so cool. The other things will kind of come in, you know, flying over people, that kind of stuff. We'll talk about that later. But, um, but here's the fun part, right? So this is like, this is almost like a, this is like a foreign language. So if you've never dealt with these before with the national airspace and airspace classifications, it's fun. <laughs> so it's probably, I think arguably, it's, it's the toughest part of the 107, right? To wrap your head around. A lot of the rest of the stuff is common sense and stuff you can kind of get. But 